Hey, welcome back. So today I'm going over a video by the Infographic Show, Worst Stereotypes About Americans When They Travel. Uh, I'm a fairly big traveler. I enjoy travel and I'm just curious to see how many of these stereotypes that I have uh, I have proven to uh, to all the Europeans that it's true. So uh, I'm just curious to see if, if I've done any of these. I'm sure I have. I'm sure my group has been loud and uh, obnoxious at times. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious. I've, I've always heard that Americans are kind of loud and bold and stuff like that when we travel to Europe. And uh, yeah, let's see if uh, you have done any of these as well. Let's see if we are a stereotype. Let's just jump in. American tourists are rude. German tourists like to hog seats. Chinese tourists only travel in packs. Visiting a foreign country or even a different region within your own country can be fraught with cringeworthy moments. Tourists and locals often hold stereotypical beliefs about each other, which, while not the full truth, often hold an element of truth. While we can generalize about the behaviors of tourists from any country, today we're discussing... I know Americans are loud. I know we're loud and obnoxious. ...some vagaries other countries and even other U.S. regions perceive in American tourists. Before you Americans watching get upset and bombard us with, not all Americans do X, Y, and Z, in the comments, please relax. This is not an official science. We're merely discussing some topics which have been frequently mentioned by locals of different nationalities are the that are, when discussing uh, the American tourists. America. For you smug and smirking citizens from other countries, you also better chill. We might do a video on tourists from your country next. Sometimes before a tourist even opens their mouth and lets an American accent fly, locals have already pegged them as a visitor from the U.S. Why, you ask? Because of Clubs. how they're dressed. Americans yep. are known for dressing down. They tend to focus on comfort and wear ill-fitting or baggy clothing. They love sweatpants, shorts, and have even been known to wear pajamas in public. Sometimes American tourists will right dress now. inappropriately for visiting certain places of interest, such as wearing shorts to a religious site, thereby disrespecting lo- Yeah, that, that's a big thing in Europe. Uh, wearing shorts, you have to be... I would normally travel you know, in the summers, you know, after school, after college, and uh, I'd be wearing shorts all the time. You want to be, like he said, you want to be comfortable when you're traveling, and I'd be often wearing shorts. I don't wear jeans all that much unless it's really cold. And then I know, you know, the the women will cover their shoulders when they, you know, go into a church and stuff like that in a religious place. Um, so, yeah, we definitely do that. We dress for comfort, and I think you have to be aware of their customs um yeah locals when not wearing sweatpants americans like to wear jeans they also like hawaiian shirts just clothing with the u.s flag or patriotic imagery and shapeless t-shirts with logos USA or right slogans there, yep. that mention sports teams everything is true so far to their home state americans enjoy accessorizing their comfortable clothing choices with fanny packs and ugly garish footwear such as flash I don't think the the fanny packs seem like back in the 90s and 80s and stuff. I mean, when I was young, fanny packs were a thing. I guess you still see them. But the shoes, that's very true. You'll see like Crocs and stuff. The sneakers, plastic clogs, and the ever popular socks with sandals. The finishing yeah. touch is often a baseball cap or sun visor, which is frequently worn inside, unless an establishment specifically forbids it. Even when Americans are nicely dressed, sometimes they can even be picked out as being from the U.S. because they'll still wear sneakers or flip-flops. Has America's propensity for underdressing been scientifically proven? No, but online polls for worst-dressed countries and worst-dressed tourists frequently have the U.S. ranked near really? the top of the list. With I'm not surprised. We go to other countries and Europe, you know, you always see in Europe, that, that's the main place I've been, as always more dapper, I guess. Maybe dapper is kind of too much, but but they're dressed nice. They're dressed nicely, you know, in, in France and England and stuff, you know. Even the people that are dressing more comfortable in Europe are often better looking with their clothes than us Americans. I mean, just going in... LA and stuff like that, you'll see people are just in max comfort, especially now after 2020. It is, uh, it's definitely a thing just to be as comfortable as possible. 
anecdotal evidence from internet forums such as Reddit, it's fair to say that most American tourists could step up their fashion sense. American tourists often give a big clue as to what country they're from by smiling. That's right, the rest of the world thinks that Americans smile too much. Long articles on various websites and even an op-ed in the New York Times have discussed this issue. American tourists smile frequently, brightly, and often have an overly friendly demeanor. Other countries tend to be more conservative with their smiles. Locals find such behavior creepy or off-putting. Americans' blinding smiles are part of their cultural landscape. In 2015, a team of international researchers found that countries with a large presence of immigrants tend to rely on body language to communicate friendliness, build trust and cooperation. With a long history of immigration and 83 source countries represented by its citizenry, the U.S. has a larger immigrant population than any other country in the world. Smiling is a quick way to try to connect with others or be pleasant when you don't know what to say. Add to that American dentistry and beauty standards which emphasize straight white teeth and the smiling can be perceived as being fake or passive-aggressive. Some would accuse US tourists of being superficial or hiding their true feelings behind a toothy grin. Some Americans take the overly friendly demeanor even further. They smile and try to connect with locals by adopting certain local mannerisms or slang to try to fit in. Locals also find this type of behavior odd and accuse Americans of trying too hard, or even cultural appropriation, depending on the American's action. The difference may lie in the culture of American friendships versus the friendship culture of the country. I know I butcher it, but just going over to, to countries in Europe and just other countries that are non-English speaking, you try to speak as much as you can in the local language. I think that's out of kind of courtesy. You don't want to come in and just be speaking English to them. I mean, you want to at least give it a shot. And I always thought that, and I, I still think that they appreciate that much more. You're trying to speak their language as best as possible, even though you know you're not not doing a good job, but you're trying. I think they appreciate that a lot more. Uh, yeah. Country they're visiting. Definitely Americans try. tend to be outgoing and easy to generally get to know. They love knowing lots of people and have casual relationships with many <laughs> friends. When meeting someone new, Americans make small talk by asking about a person's career as an easy way of gaining some insight into who that person is. While on the other hand, locals in many countries consider a person's career less vital to their identity and view questions about what they do for a living as boring, rude, trying to categorize them or put them into a box. In I many countries, people are initially hard to get to know, but have longer-term, deep, intimate relationships with a few friends as opposed to quickly built superficial relationships with a large number of people. Americans, impatient to force a rapport or bonds by appropriating local culture, can be seen as insulting or embarrassing. Of course, when Americans open their mouths, the American accent comes out. If it's a specifically yeah. recognizable accent such as a southern drawl, New Jersey spiel, or laid-back West Coast accent, locals may recognize it and it's have me. certain expectations or feelings about certain American tourists simply because of the accent. This even frequently happens in America. Southerners are dumb hicks, New Yorkers are impatient, and on and on. U.S. citizens have American entertainment being broadcast around the world to thank for that. American tourists are often seen as culturally ignorant, brash, and wanting to be catered to. These traits display themselves in many ways. Americans those are seem all to true prefer too. to stick to fast food such as McDonald's when they travel instead of trying out local cuisine. They often get confused or angry when they can't use American money in other countries. They seem to have the attitude I don't I don't know if I've ever seen any American trying to use the dollar, the US dollar in another country. I I'm, I mean I'm sure it happens, but in some some countries actually love getting that. I've been to some countries and they would prefer the dollar to to the euro. Um I think it was in like Turkey or something like that. They they're very open to it and they also have exchanges like hey, you could either pay this in US dollars or or this is the price in euros. So Maybe that's where it comes from. Some areas, especially that are very touristy, will do that. But, yeah.
attitude that throwing their money around will get them what they want. Also, Americans rarely take the time to learn anything beyond the surface of local culture. They are ignorant regarding geography and global affairs. Many surveys have confirmed that Americans tend to know less about the world than people of other countries. Most recently, a 2016 National Geographic survey quizzed over a thousand U.S. college students about geography, current events, and economics and world trade. Oh, Most respondents were only able to get half the questions right. They scored about 55%. I need to do this task. These are some of them. Here, let me, let me look at that again. I've done some of these on this channel, like geography. I absolutely love for whatever reason. I love numbers of countries, geography, GDP, stuff like that. And I've done multiple of these of Europe. I did really well on, thankfully. Um, other places, though, like Asia and South America, I did okay, but are rough. Africa, I don't know much about that at all, but these are all stuff that I love and I actually need to just look up look up these videos to react to. Current I like this stuff, but I know a lot trade. of Americans will Most not respondents were only able to get half the questions right. They scored about 55%. On the flip side, locals report Americans as being offended when they're only familiar with large cities in the US and don't know the small town in the Midwest the tourist is from. Along Never with the cultural one. ignorance is the attitude that Americans are somehow better and other countries and people exist solely for the entertainment of Americans on vacation. US tourists forget that they are guests in another country and should respect the customs and traditions of their host nation. Sometimes American yeah. tourists feel no compunction in taking a picture of people belonging to certain religions or cultures as some sort of vacation memento, often without asking said person first. American tourists are notorious for being monolingual. Along with their pushy, needing to be catered to attitude, vacationing Americans often assume that people automatically speak English. They're surprised, frustrated, mm -hmm. and can even be offended when locals don't speak English. Puzzlingly, they've even been known to speak English louder and more slowly to try to get people to understand. You Surveys see that have a shown lot of that movies. about 20% of Americans speak more than one language as opposed to 56% of Europeans. In many other countries, students are required to learn another language before graduating high school. In America, some school districts encourage learning other languages. However, nationally, no such rule exists. Yeah, that's true, too. It's like if you're going to a four-year college, you need, I think it's two years of a language. But I mean, that's that's hardly anything to learn a language two years, and that's just, you know, four semesters worth of, of language. And I feel like that's just, you just learn the basics and then you kind of a lot of people just kind of forget it so you need definitely a lot more than two years whereas a lot of european countries they start when they're really young like you know you're supposed to when you're trying to learn anything that's the best time to to retain the information 20 percent of americans study another language in school as compared to 92 percent of european students of the bilingual americans many are immigrants or first generation americans Professionals in the restaurant sector in other countries are often not impressed by the American tourists that patronize their establishment. When Americans do forego the fast food and try local dishes, they tend to be complainers. Not only do dining American tourists have the customer's always that. right attitude, they want their food to be served quickly and gallop through their meal. This behavior is odd to cultures where dining is important. Lingering over your food and enjoying the settling and conversation is a huge part of the meal. Also, local servers find that Americans have childlike palates. They'll ask for condiments such as ketchup so they can douse their food before eating it. American tourists are highly it's critical of food portion size in other countries, calling them also tiny. true. It's true. Serving sizes they in typical small. American restaurants tend to be around 20% larger than the average entree served in Europe. This feeds into stereotypes of American tourists being fat and greedy. We the fat part here. is true. Some two-thirds of Americans are overweight. People in other countries assume that American tourists are wealthy. The U.S. has a powerful global economic standing in regard to other countries. Many American TV shows feature stories about the upper-class Americans. Americans have big houses and multiple cars. Furthermore, they're on vacation in another country. The U.S. has a tipping culture, too, and so Americans... Ex yeah, I watched a video of... Uh, <clears throat> might have been from the infographic show, but it was comparing, I think it was, the Americans to just the U.S. to uh england in in general and i think the normal house i forget what it was the average home home uh, size and square feet is something like 900 roughly around there in the uk and in america in the us it was 2100 square feet so a massive difference there and i think that's the general and maybe this was london 
I think it was in, in just England uh, as a whole, but in Europe in general, I, it's probably around the same. Expect to tip when they go overseas. Also, Americans sometimes get large sums of cash from foreign ATMs. To locals, this reinforces the idea that American tourists are rolling in the dough. In We're addition to being depicted as wealthy in the entertainment media, young Americans are also displayed too. as carefree party animals. When young Americans go overseas to countries with lower drinking ages, they frequently go overboard on enjoying mm -hmm. the liquor, living up to culture, the image depicted on TV. Of course, not all true. American tourists are slobby, fat, shallow, English-speaking, only culturally ignorant, drunken party animals who... I mean, I, I've seen all of these in people. When I was in Europe, I went to a restaurant in, in Italy, in Rome, and this group, this pack of Americans came in to eat there, and they're just so picky. They're asking for, you know, diet diet Coke and, and all their, their food items, very specific. So, yeah, I, I've definitely seen a lot of these in Americans. I feel like it's in, maybe maybe I'm wrong, the older generation. Um, I know my, my grandfather was more uh, a big list of these. I think he felt almost entitled when he was over there. Um, he was in World War II and everything, so maybe that's why. Uh, and the young people are in different, like the drunk, drunken party an, uh, animals and a few of these other things, so it's kind of like a mixed bag. Toss money around. However, we can't ignore the grains of truth in these stereotypes. Thankfully, many people meeting American tourists visiting their countries realize that people are individuals rather than just a stereotype and treat them as such. What's an awkward experience you've had as a tourist or with a tourist? Let us... That was a good video. I think that's, that's very true. I think all these stereotypes are pretty true, so... And I've seen them in a lot of them too. You just know you've like like I said in the beginning of the video, you've seen you've seen these if you've been traveling. Um, you you hear about them all the time, and for the most part, I think they are true. But like they said at the end of the video, if you go up and kind of meet uh, any tourist, an American, or if you're here at European and stuff like that, they're you know very nice and fun to hang out with, uh, very cultured a lot more than you think. So. The stereotypes just break down when you actually meet the individual and kind of just hang out with them. So this is a good video. I think it's, it's very true. Um, let me know what you think and the experiences that you've seen. But overall, yeah, I think this is true as just a generalization to the U.S. tourists, especially going to Europe probably anywhere I guess so let me know if you've had any of these experiences and if you're from another country what you if you could add on to this list um, I want to hear about it so until next time let's do more travel let's see more of the world and uh, I'll see you next time